Hello and welcome to this video. We are going to learn how to find or, or to calculate the volume of a frustum of a cone. So what do we mean by a frustum of a cone? So in a previous video, we learned how to calculate the volume of a cone. So let's say this is a cone, a sketch of a cone that way. Okay, so that's a cone. So if we decide <clears throat> to cut this cone, let's say at this point, okay, what are we going to have? We're going to have a small cone at the top, that way, okay, this one. And then we're going to have the bottom part, or the part that is going to remain at the bottom, is going to be going to be something like this okay so this is what we call a frustum of a cone a frustum of a cone we call it the frustum of a cone because it's derived from a cone there is also a frustum of a square pyramid and so on because it's derived from a square pyramid but we shall look at that in other videos for this video i want us to concentrate on the first term of a cone <clears throat> so now in that video where we learned how to calculate the volume of a cone and i'm going to leave the link to it in the description box so that if you never had a chance to look at it you can get to watch it and learn how to find the volume of a cone. So we said that we find the volume of a cone using the formula that is a third pi r squared h. Okay. So if this is the radius and we have the perpendicular height. Okay. So this is what we call the 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 height so this is the height and the radius so this is the formula that we use to calculate the volume of a cone so now how do we now find the first term the area uh, the, sorry the volume of a first term of a cone so as you can see we have one big cone and then we are cutting it and then we are, we, are, we are cutting it into two and we're going to have a smaller cone and now the part that is remaining that we have said it's known as a frustum. So I know you you already have okay uh maybe uh, a glimpse of the formula and it's going to be the volume of the larger cone minus the volume of the smaller cone so this is the larger cone this one and this is a smaller cone so when you subtract the two or when we subtract the volume of the smaller cone from the volume of uh, the larger cone we are going to be left with the volume of this frustum so let's look at one or two examples so that we can get to understand this in a much better way so let's say we have a frustum of a cone that way. We have a frustum. This is just a sketch. It may not be that perfect. So that's a sketch of a frustum of a cone. Okay. So this frustum has this bottom radius as 14 centimeters and then this first term has a top radius of seven centimeters and then we are told that this first term also has a height of 10 centimeters it has a height of 10 centimeters so what is the volume of this frustum 
What is the volume of this first sum? So let's go back to our formula. We've, we've said that the volume of a first term is equal to the volume of the larger cone from which it was uh, derived and then minus the volume of the smaller cone. So let's do this. So let's extend this line this way. Okay. So initially the cone or the larger cone was that way and then at this point it was cut and after it was cut uh, we ha we had this this cone this smaller cone okay let me draw it here we had this smaller cone oh i'm actually very poor at drawing okay so that way so this is the the smaller cone and it has a radius of 7 and now we have now this initial large cone that had a radius of 14 centimeters so we are going to find the volume of this large one and then we subtract the volume of that cone that was cut from the larger cone and whatever we are going to be left with will be the volume of this first term so now to find the volume of a cone, as we said, we're going to use the formula a third pi r squared h. Now let's start with the larger cone. For the larger cone, we have the radius as 14. Okay? But then, the height that we have is of the first term. We only have the height of this first term. Okay? We do not have the entire height of that of the larger cone so what do we do so let's say let's say that this height of this small cone is x centimeters okay x centimeters now so this is the height of the small cone uh, x x centimeters and then the height of the larger cone what is it going to be in terms of x it's going to be from here to here it's x and then from here to here is 10 so we can say 10 plus x centimeters now what do we do to get the exact volume or the exact length of this cone. Now there is something known as scale factor. I know we haven't talked about this but I will create another video where I will teach you or we shall learn more about the scale factor. So we have the linear scale factor, we have area scale factor and we also have the volume scale factor. I know we haven't talked about this but don't worry about them we shall get to learn about them in the next video actually i'm going to create another video after this to talk about the scale factor so what we're going to use here is the linear scale factor okay now so what is it about the linear scale factor so if you look at this uh at this cone we have a larger cone and we have a smaller cone. Now these two cones are similar. Okay? Are similar. The only difference is their sizes. But they are similar. How do we know they are similar? Now, if we take the radius of this larger cone. And then the radius of this smaller cone. Okay? And then we take the height the height of this larger cone and the height of this smaller cone. Now, what you realize is that the ratio, the ratio of the radius, let's say, let's say the radius of this, let me abbreviate it as a capital R. So the radius of this, the ratio of the radius of this large cone uh, to 
the radius of this smaller cone, which let me say r, so that is the ratio of the uh, the radius of the larger cone to the radius of the smaller cone. It will be equal to the height of this or the ratio of the height of this larger cone, which is 10 plus x, 10 plus x divided by the height of this smaller cone, which is x. Okay, so this is what we call the linear scale factor, but don't bother about it so much for now because I will create another video where I will explain this in detail. So, we can use this relationship to get the value of x because we already have the two radii, that is of the larger cone and the smaller cone. Actually, I can replace this, I can replace this with the larger the the radius of the larger cone is 14 and the radius of the smaller cone is 7 so i can actually replace that with 7 so we can use this uh this equation to find the value of x let's do it so what do we do we're going to cross multiply so it's going to be 14x is equal to 7 multiplied by 10 plus x and this is 14x is equal to 70 plus 7x okay okay so we, we can put like terms together so we can have we can subtract 7x on both sides so that on this side we'll have 0 or 70 it's going to, we're going to be left with 70 and we're going to have 7x okay so if you divide through by 7 the value of x is going to be 10 centimeters okay and what is 10 te, uh, and what is x x is the height of the smaller cone so x is 10 so the height of the smaller cone is 10 centimeters what about the larger cone the height is so from here to here it was 10 and then we have another 10 so in other words the height of the larger cone so the height so we have said that the height of the smaller cone is 10 centimeters and that of the larger cone is going to be 20 centimeters so now we all have we now have both heights and we have both radii so that means we can now use our formula which was volume volume of larger cone minus the volume of the smaller cone now the volume of the larger cone uh, it's going to be uh, using the formula that is a third times pi we're going to use 22 out of 7 times the square of the radius so the radius was that of the larger cone the radius was 14 centimeters so it's going to be times 14 times 14 and then times the height which we have found to be 20 centimeters so that is the volume of the larger cone and then all that we, we subtract the volume of the smaller cone which is going to be a third times pi times the square of the radius so 7 times 7 and then times the height which is 10 centimeters so let's work that out you can probably pause the video and try to work it out by yourself and then confirm what you whether whether what you you have done is actually the correct thing so now we can simplify this so we can have by 7 it's 1 by 7 it's 2 and then we can multiply all this so 22 times 2 is 44 then times 14 times 20 and then all that we divide by 3 so that's going to be 
uh, it's going to be 4106.667 uh, cubic centimeters so that's the volume of the larger cone what about that of the smaller cone so uh, we can have by 71 by 71 so when you multiply all this it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, 513.333 uh, cubic centimeters so that is the volume of the smaller cone so now to get the volume of the first term we're going to subtract the two and it's going to be uh, 3593.333 cubic centimeters so that is the volume of the first term. So uh, we're going to look at another example. Uh, okay, or rather what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you one example. Uh, you're going to work it out. And then you're going to write down the answer on the comment section. And then I will tell you whether it's correct or not. Okay. So let's say we have we have a first term that way. We have a first term of a cone. Okay, that way. Just a sketch. And then we have the radius of the top <coughs> of the top circle. The radius as a uh, 14 centimeters and then the radius of the bottom circle as as 30 centimeters okay so okay and then we have the height of this first term as 15 centimeters so try to work that out uh, you just follow the process that I've just shown you. It's simple. And then you can let me know your answer by dropping it on the comment section. And then I will tell you whether it's correct or not. So let's meet in the next video. Goodbye for now. And thank you for watching.